What's up everybody? We've got a great video in store for you. We're going to be out on the Missouri River fishing the fast rising waters. We had some uh, heavy rain the night before, so she's coming up. Uh, fish are biting pretty good. We're going to be uh, throwing a few tips at you too on the way. And then check out this monster at the end of the video that I hook into when I'm trying to release some of these fish. So hope you enjoy. We'll see you out there. All right, so we're at the Missouri River today. I got some fresh live shad and bluegill in the live well. We're gonna try that out. Um, a lot of debris down, floating down the river today. The river's on the rise. We got a lot of rain last night. So that, that's a good thing, but there's a lot of, a lot of debris washing down. So we're kind of trying to find little areas where we can cast out, not get so uh, hung up in the debris right now. We're just kind of tucked along this bluff. Got a little dip there, it's got a little current break. The debris seems to be staying out that way. So we're just gonna cast I don't think I'll be able to get all my rods out, but I might get a few out just to try to see along here and uh, try to get something to bite. So let's get them out there. So today I'm just running a Carolina rig, leader line, mono, got a sinker slide and some braid. Simple setup, it's my favorite setup, or rig I should say, and uh, I do pretty good on it. I'm running a 12 ounce sinker right in this spot because I'm trying to keep some of the baits off to the side a bit it so I need enough weight to keep it from wanting to swing over behind the boat. So that's pretty much and then a nine knot circle hook. You see that? And then got this fresh shad head I'm gonna throw out there. I ought to get a big one. live bluegill. There's some uh, cover back there so we might luck out and find a flathead in there somewhere. Got a little bit of different baits on each one so even if they are kind of grouped up at least they'll be giving them a selection there. And I've got some live shad out, cut shad, live bluegill and cut bluegill. I had one of my big bluegill die on me, so I just cut them up. And then see what happens. Gotta let them fish tell you what they want, and then I have an idea. And I got them all different distances back. There's actually a drop off right here, so the, they use this little cur current stop where it drops down and it'll get on the back side of that. So I got a couple just thrown right behind the boat there. And then there's some uh, old wood back there, farther back. I tried to cast back to that a little bit. Hits. There we go. Come on, take her. Ah. Dang it. Strike one. Got a little impatient there. Well, it's a good sign that they're here. That was on that live shed. So far, they're just smacking it real hard and letting go. So. A little frustrating when they do that. Just gotta be patient with it and see. See if we can't get them to commit here. There we go. There we go. Got one on the uh, big bluegill head I threw out right behind the boat here. Hit it how we like them to hit it. Adjust my drag here a little bit. That's how we want them to hit. There we go. All right. All right, girl. Man, don't want you to go nowhere. All right. Get that. 
net on her. There we go. All right. And that was a big old bluegill head I had right behind the boat here. This is the uh, bluegill I had on. I just, it died on me, so I chopped the head off. Threw it out there, so. That's what we got. There we are. Pretty nice one. We'll get a weight on her. Fifteen ninety two. Pretty much sixteen pounder. I might uh try and catch me one of these Asian carp used for bait too. Uh, winter time I use about 95% of the time I use shad, gizzard shad. But now it's being warmer, water temps are above, oh what are we, about 65 degrees and start using other baits. Like that one I just caught on the bluegill head. Uh, might get an Asian carp, I like using those when it warmer time of year. So real good summer bait, but I've caught them any time of the year on it, but try and get some bigger baits out here. I've got some okay size shad right now, but and I got two big bluegill, which I caught that one on that big biggest bluegill I had. So play around a little bit with it and see what they want. So. Here we go. Smashed it. It's an okay fish. Not too bad. On the shad. So far we're lucking out with this debris in this spot. We're getting hit by it a little bit, but not too bad. You can kind of see, see it all washing down there. It's kind of just staying out there just enough. And then I kind of, I'm only able to get just right in there, but. Oh, right. oh that's a good one. Okay. Come on. Good one on here. If it happens to be on the rod that ain't got a lot of line on it. May have to blank her here if I. It's coming to me now. It's a good fish here. But he's coming to me because I ain't got much line on this rod. For real, I mean. Come on, big girl. Get a look at you. Ooh, this is a good one. Oh yeah, dang. Oh man. Good fish, good fish. I got to get the uh, nut. Oh man, it's a mean old fish. All right. There we go. Whew. Man. Had me nervous at first. I got hung up on this reel earlier and broke off a bunch of line and I didn't have much line. Plus I went ahead and cast it out and she was Pulling some drag there. I was a little, a little worried I might run out of line. I'd have to pull the anchor and go with her, but she came upstream to me. So that worked out. She was pulling pretty hard there for a minute. Had me worried, but she's in the boat. Let's get her up here, get her weighed, and show them to you guys. And, uh, there we are. 
Hopefully you guys on there can see that. Yep. Good fish. Get a weight on her. Okay, I got. Forty. Not bad. You always got to get you. Nice forty. Caught that one on my own. Angler's Edge prototype rod. Been trying all these different prototypes off for over a year now. Finally got one. Figured out it's gonna be a couple little changes to this, different colors and stuff, but it's nice to get a big one on your own rod. All right, got all resituated here. Had, got hung up on a couple rods, caught that big fish. Gets a little hectic, threw everything around in the boat. Had to get things cleaned up. Get some stuff retied on. We're back out at it. I see the question asked a lot is, uh, current too strong in some of the spots they're fishing. Um, but as you can see, yeah, it's pretty decent current here. It's on the Missouri River. And these catfish are hanging out in it, no problem. They'll even get in the swifter, more swifter current than this, but don't let that current keep you from fishing. Just get you a good enough weight to get your bait down there and you'll find them they, they have ways of getting in getting out of that current under there that you don't even know of they can kind of suction themselves to the bottom and not really even burn any energy or they can get behind a, a rock boulder a dip in the bottom uh, any kind of current break they can use some of the stuff you can see in the fish finder but if you're you know bank fisherman or something you don't get to see out there you're fishing that current don't think that they they aren't out there. Uh, it ain't gonna. It ain't gonna slow them down. Then they know. They know how to use that that current to their advantage. And um, just like I said, get you a strong enough weight. Get out there and give it a try. And if there's any visual current breaks, um, that could be really anything. Sometimes it's just the bank sticking out, and it causes a current break. You can fish that eddy behind that, or um, just kind of anything you can think of or see along the bank there. Oh, another good one. Uh, got another good one on here. Drag peeler. Come on. Hungry today. Big enough, enough battery on the camera to get this fish in. I have to get my phone ready in case not. fish are already strong as can be and then you put them in that swift current. That and that. There we go. Right, we are on them today boys and girls. Another Missouri River gulper in the boat. Hey buddy. All right, so I'm out of room in the live well. I'm gonna have to get all these fish out, get some pictures with them and let them go. So you can come out here and catch them when they're bigger. Or I can bring my kids out here 
and they can catch them when they're bigger. All right, so there's the bounty for the day. Got a 40, 26, 16, and a 11 pounder. Not too bad. Day's still kind of young, but I'm just about out of bait. I might be able to get one more in before the end here, so. Now it's kind of hard to stack them up on your own, especially with an even bigger fish, so I'm gonna try it. 40. 26 and a 16 and then a 10 pounder there on the floor but you get the point good day on the Missouri River oh. some of this stuff ain't easy to do by yourself things we do for your viewing pleasure. And I love every minute of it. Fish back in the water here. So it's good to give them a minute to get revived here. Let that water, that current run through their gills. I keep getting bites while I'm trying to do stuff here. I need to get these fish back in the water. I got them all piled up here on the floor. I gotta switch to my phone because my batteries are all dead on the camera. Just take your time with them like this. Oh, there goes another one. Dang it. Okay. Another big one on here. Really big fish on here now, and I'm my cameras and everything. I just this one is peeling drag. Whew, look at that! Holy cow! Oh man, this is a big one, boys and girls. It is peeling some drag, and it took some distance there. I've got all these fish here. I'm trying to release. I just smashed it. I can't even get this stuff on camera. Whew, this is a heavy one here. I mean, jeez. Whew. Well, this already by far is the hardest fighting fish I've hooked into yet. It almost feels like a flathead. see man it is not <laughs> Whew. what I'm talking about <sighs> and the old angler's itch rod too it's my other prototype jeez that thing is pulling please lord don't let this thing get off Jeez, come on, big girl. Come on back. Man. I don't know what I've got myself into here. Monster. Wearing me out. goes up at the surface there. Oh wow. It's a big one. That's a big fish. They're finally coming to me. Try to get you guys 
see this, but I'm not gonna lose this fish because I was in the middle of doing something here. So let's see if we can't get this thing on camera here. Come right to the boat now. This one's got the old adrenaline pumping. Yeah, that's a big fish. Let me get my net if I can here. I got so much going on. That might be a pretty big fish there, you know. Come on, get in that net. Get in that net. It's made for fish, 150 pounds. There's an absolute giant. There you go. Yeah. <sighs> yeah, baby. It's definitely a personal best here. Give me a minute. That was a fight. Holy cow, that fish was one hard fighting son of a gun. Geez, I'm sitting here trying to let this 40 go, and I think about ripping my rod out of the rod holder. I thought I was done for the day. I just had two more rods out. So I'm gonna try and get this in the boat. I wanna let these go. And then, um, Get some, let you guys see this freaking thing. I don't know how big it is. Shit. It's a monster. Look at that thing compared to that. That's a 40 pound fish right there. Look at that thing next to that. I don't know how big that fish is, but. It's a giant. I gotta reel this other rod up because I can't handle anymore. Oh, man, that one actually had me nervous a little bit. I actually had the adrenaline going. That thing was an absolute monster. All right. All right, let me see if I can get this thing picked up for you guys. Give me a second here. Some stuff to figure it out. Look at a head on that thing. I don't even know if I can get this thing picked up. Absolute giant. I gotta get some of this stuff out of the way here. All right, a little excited, but I took my time, let all those other fish go. Let them revive off the side there, so now I can mess with this thing. Try and pick it up for you guys here. That's a big one, boys and girls. Yeah, buddy. I got a fish slam in my ear. Are we gonna get a weight on this fish and get it back in the water? Eighty-nine fifty-one, new personal best. Caught that pig on the other angler's itch prototype here. Handled that fish well. 
Pretty cool catching your personal best on your own rod. Okay, we're gonna get this pig back in the water. I think we're gonna call it a day. It's uh, been an epic day, that's for sure. It's the days you come out here for. All right, we're gonna let this 89 with, in the net. Oh, let him go here. off nice and mean there <sighs> all right so if there's any kind of lesson to be learned on this trip uh, we got into him pretty good as you can see started off a couple spots wasn't going well it was overcast I started about I don't know, 11 o'clock started getting lines in the water and then I got to this spot I just kind of had little quick hits. Um, it was enough to kind of keep me interested. So I just hung around in that area and um, it ended up paying off. It just, it just started going nuts. It, the sun came out, the uh, clouds kind of opened up. It started to get to be about, I don't know, four or five o'clock in the evening. And they just started boom, boom, one after another, the big ones. So, um, I don't give spots a lot of time if I'm not getting any action, but sometimes if you're getting a little bit of action, it's worth kind of sticking it out and seeing what, what happens. So, that's what I did. And it, it, I caught a couple smaller ones, and then it just kind of got paid off, got into some big, big ones, some good action. So, I just got to be patient with it. Well, all right, folks, there you have it. Hopefully you enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed making it. As you can see, when this river's on the rise, it can be a pretty good time out there. So if you enjoyed this video, check out some of these others, and we'll see you on the next bite.